How does your head look to your eyes? Well, I tell you, it looks like what you see out in front of you. Because all that you see out in front of you is how you feel inside your head. So it's the same with this. And so, for this reason, the great sixth patriarch, Hui Nang, in China, said that it was a great mistake for those who were practicing Buddhist meditation to try to make their minds empty. And a lot of people tried to do that. They sat down and tried to have no thoughts whatever in their minds. And not only no thoughts, but no sense experiences. So they'd close their eyes, they'd plug up their ears, and uh, generally go in for sensory deprivation. Well, sensory deprivation, if you know how to handle it, can be quite interesting. It'll have the same sort of results as uh, taking LSD or something like that. And there are special labs made nowadays where you can be sensorily deprived to an amazing degree. But if you're a sort of a, a good yogi, this doesn't bother you at all, it sends some people crazy. But if you dig this world, uh, you can have a marvelous time in a sensory deprivation scene. Also, especially if they get you into a condition of weightlessness. Skin divers going down below uh, a certain number of feet, I don't know exactly how far it is, but get a sense of weightlessness. And at the same time, this deprives them of every sense of responsibility. They become alarmingly happy. And they have been known to simply take off their masks and offer them to a fish. And of course, they then drown. So if you skin dive and you, keep, you have to keep your eye on the time, you have to have a water watch or a friend who's got a string attached to you if you go down that far. And at a certain specific time, you know you have got to get back. However happy you feel and however much inclined to uh, say, survival, survival, what the hell's the point of that? <laughs> and this is happening to the men who go out into space. They will increasingly find that they have to have automatic controls to bring them back. Quite aside that they can't change in any way from the spaceship. Now, isn't that interesting? Can you become weightless here? I said a little while ago that the person who really accepts transience begins to feel weightless. When Suzuki was asked, what is it like to have experienced Satori? Enlightenment, he said, it's just like ordinary everyday experience, but about two inches off the ground. Zhuangzi, the Taoist, said, it is easy enough to stand still. The difficulty is to walk without touching the ground. Why do you feel so heavy? It isn't just a matter of gravitation and weight. It is that you are feel that you are carrying your body around. There is a koan in Zen Buddhism. Who is it that carries this corpse around? And so when you feel it, we, common speech expresses this all the time. Life is a drag. I feel I'm just dragging myself around. My body is a burden to me. To whom? When there is no body left for whom the body can be a burden. The body isn't a burden. But so long as you fight it, it is. So then, when there is no body left to resist the thing that we call change, which is simply another word for life, and when we dispel the illusion that we think our thoughts instead of being just a stream of thoughts and that we feel our feelings instead of being just feelings. It's like saying, you know, to feel the feelings is a redundant expression. It's like saying, actually, I hear sounds. 
for there are no sounds which are not heard. Hearing is sound. Seeing is sight. You don't see sights. Sightseeing is a ridiculous word. You could just say either sighting or seeing, one or the other, but sightseeing is nonsense. 